Hi everyone, it's Melissa, and today I'm going to share with you um, some books that I bought recently. So this is kind of exciting for me because I don't buy that many books new, or I don't do it that frequently. Um, I read mostly from the library, and when I do buy books, I tend to buy them secondhand at like library sale or thrift stores or something. Um, but I got some money for Christmas and, um, I recently had a birthday in February and I got some money for my birthday. And so I decided to use, um, some of that money to buy some books and treat myself a little bit. So, um, the first book that I bought is From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Doty. And... I have read, um, I think it was last year I read her first book, um, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. So uh, Caitlin is a um, funeral director and mortician. She has a YouTube channel called Ask a Mortician, which I am obsessed with. Um, and Smoke Gets in Your Eyes was her, um, I guess you could call it a memoir of sorts, um, about um, her first job at a crematory. Um, and this book... Um, is more about her, um, well, I guess it says it right there, right? Traveling the world to find the good death. So it's all about different um, death and funeral ritual, which rituals and beliefs from around the world. Um, if you haven't checked out her YouTube channel, I highly recommend it. She talks about, um, she really demystifies like death and funerals and like the funeral industry. And um, I find all of her content, content really fascinating. And I liked her first book, so I am... I'm excited to give this a try. So the next one I bought because of a booktuber, um, so I've mentioned in my first couple of videos um, that I really enjoy um, fairy tales, like books either based on fairy tale or using fantastical or fairy tale or folklore elements. And um, I wanted to have uh, more like actual fairy tales, like original fairy tales on my shelf. And I had heard um, Jen Campbell talk about um, this book or recommend this book um, if you are interested in fairy tales. So this is the first edition of the Brothers Grimm. As Jen explained it, um, the Brothers Grimm were um, like revisionists. They were constantly rewriting their stories and changing certain things. So there's many different editions and most of the English translations are from later editions. So I think Jen said that this is the only English translation of the first edition, so the original stories, as written by the Brothers Grimm. I haven't um, dove into it yet, but it also has um, some illustrations too, which I thought was kind of fun. Um, and what's a fairy tale book without illustrations, right? So, I mean, this is a huge book, but it's all smaller stories, so um, yeah, so I'll probably kind of pick up a story um, here or there. I took a brief flip through and there's a bunch of stories I've never even heard of so I'm very excited to pick away at this over the next um, year or so. So this next one I saw in like a bargain classics area um, and I've been meaning to read more classics this year because I'm very underwritten in my classics so I was just kind of looking through them and seeing if any sounded good um, and I had never heard of this one, but I bought it because of the description on the back. I'll explain that in a second. But it's um, Silas Marner by George Eliot. Um, I've never read any George Eliot, and I'm hoping to um, read uh, a lot of authors this year that I haven't read before. And yeah, I'd never heard of it. And then I turned it over and I read the back and I realized this sounds exactly like a movie that I watched, I think, in like middle school that I absolutely loved at the time. I don't know if it holds up or not, but the movie was starring uh, uh, Steve Martin and it was called A Simple Twist of Fate. I don't know if anybody remembers this movie, um, but it's about this like reclusive miser um, and he one day this like two year old girl wanders into his cottage like out of the woods or whatever um, and he ends up raising her, but then her her past comes back and threatens to, um, threatens to like break them apart as a family. And the back of this book is, a, it says it's about a, a weaver whose sole pleasure is to count his growing hoard of gold. And one day this two year old, 
um, wanders into his cottage and he, Silas raises the little girl, um, but then her true background comes to light. So like, I think this was what that movie was based on. I love that movie, at least at the time. So I'm super um, excited to have found this randomly and to read it and see um, how similar it is or isn't. So the next book is a book for a uh, book club that I just started with some friends of mine. It's our first pick um, for March and it's Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. Um, I'm not sure if I know how to pronounce her last name, but she's a Canadian um, Inuit uh, throat singer. Google that, uh, YouTube it if you don't know what that is. It's really interesting um, form of performance and singing. Um, but she's written this book that is fiction, but I think has some elements of like, like part memoir, part fiction, I, th I think is, um, is how I'm understanding this book. So it's about this girl growing up in Nunavut, um, in nor Northern Canada. And, um, she lives in this community where the community, or at least in her life, there's, um, violence and abuse and alcoholism and it's, um, her story and, uh, she becomes pregnant, um, at some point in this book and it's her navigating that and it's written partly in prose but I it looks like partly in poetry as well which I think is super interesting so um, I this is for book club so I will definitely be reading it and I will let you know how it is uh, the next book I bought because I saw it on book outlet so I used some of my birthday money to purchase this because I have seen so many booktubers uh, sing its praises and it's Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This is also a book that uh, I think is kind of experimental in how it's written, like is partly prose, but maybe partly poetry, or at least it, it takes some liberties with writing, um, with writing style here. So that's really interesting. And I've heard such great things about it. I don't know much about it besides um, it's about this crow who comes to visit, I think a father and his sons after he loses his wife so um it's them navigating their grief i think the crow is like the embodiment of their grief something like that it sounds really interesting um i will definitely prioritize this for um reading this year so the last book is something that i um didn't really plan to buy i just was perusing my local bookstore and the cover kind of caught me and then I read the inside flap and I thought it sounded really interesting so this is very much a spontaneous purchase and it is dry <laughs> no it's drive your plow over the bones of the dead by Olga Tagarsuk I will show you um, the author's name because I probably didn't say it right <clears throat> And it's a book about a woman who is a little bit reclusive. She lives in, I think it's Warsaw or maybe a town outside of Warsaw. And she's spending her winter um, studying astrology and like translating poetry. It sounds, I mean, that in and of itself sounds really cool. But then um, at some point in the book, um, she's learned that her neighbor called Bigfoot is it? Yeah. So her neighbor Bigfoot turns up dead and then other people start to die. And so this normally recluse is inserting herself in the investigation because she's sure um, she knows who it is or knows how to solve the mystery. Um, so yeah, all I know about it is what I got from the um, inside uh, summary. So yeah, this is a completely spontaneous buy, but hopefully I will like it. So those are all of my new books and I will update you if I read any of them. And thanks so, so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.